this interview when I read it shocked me. That time I understood, oh my God, the total textbooks are totally wrong from what it is. The journalist asked this question. There are many Hindu Swamiji's in India and some are very good, some create controversies, some create bad name. How do we know which Swamiji is good or bad and how do we go? To whom should I we go? This question was asked by a journalist to Swami Chinmayananda Saraswati and he said, for a nursery kid, any nursery teachers, for primary school, you need primary teachers, for high school, high school teachers, for college, lecturers, professors, like that it goes. So you decide if you are have the mentality of a nursery child, go to the nursery swamiji. There are swamijis at different levels in the Hindu custom. You decide whom you like it. Do not tell you go to a nursery swamiji and you, you wanted something, he talks like a professor, then you should not criticize him. You leave him and go to another swamiji who has got the uh, talk of a professor level. I started liking <laughs> That did change quite a lot in me on that one thinking, yes. Swami Chinmayananda Saraswati was a Hindu spiritual leader and a teacher. In 1951, he founded the Chinmaya Mission, a worldwide non-profit organization in order to spread the knowledge of Advaita Vedanta, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads and other ancient Hindu scriptures. Swami Chinmayananda Saraswati said, we may often give without love, but we can never love without giving. People keep on giving, yes, without love. <laughs> And today, very healthy mommy. She must be uh, around 18 to 20 years old. And even three months back also she gave birth. And the milk was, when we bought it, bought her from Kenkiri Ashirvan Ashram, her mother we bought. Mother was giving 25. That mother's mother was giving that was 40 liters. That grandmother was giving 60, 60 liters when father got the gold medal. And this Kalavadi was a baby with the mommy, and the father was not willing to give me the baby. She said, He said, You take the mommy. I said, No, I'll, I'll take the baby. He said, The baby has got fits epilepsy. I said, Not a problem. My kids also got epilepsy. And I know that the treatment every day we give tablets, it will be cured. You give me the okay. She, of course, the epilepsy was not cured because maybe my people did not give her correctly every day. So, given the epilepsy medicine, even an animal or a human being be cured in three years' time. Before it was four years, three years. Now it is two years. And Kalavadi was, she, she, many times she got fixed. She used to fall down and break down the walls and all things. But living for 20 years is something great. And then still continuously giving birth every year without a break. That means she must have given us around 18 to 20 kids. <laughs> and I was driving towards Intranagar. I saw all my cows coming, so I waited. All the cows entered the gate. And Kalavati was going towards the next uh, land. And my uh, my Nepali person, Haribau, was taking care. He was running behind uh, her, catching all of her. Uh, tail. I immediately called Narayan. Narayan, run! Then Narayan said, her fits. So I said, okay, fits. As soon as she gets fits, run. And I went near to her. I stopped the car near to her. She suddenly fell down. Thump! And both the, all the four went up. Legs went up. Then I thought, should I get down? They might keep asking me for this or that. So I thought, let me reach Indranaga. I went. When I reached Indranaga, I got the call. Uh, Kalavadi was no more. She was a huge, big cow, everybody thinks she was a um, bull, but Kalavati, any any smallest kid can go to her, she loves, even her kids, wow, one of huge big bulls are there, she goes and licks them, the greatest lover ever come across, <laughs> she can only know to give love and milk, 
Swami Chirmayananda said, we may often give without love, but we can never love without giving. I, I have hens and cocks in my ashram. And always I watch, the cock will nev never attack the hen. He will first go around and find the food, and then he keeps on making noise. Quack, 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 quack. When the hen comes running to him, only then they make love or they talk love. He will first feed her. Such a beautiful in the animal world, in the nature world. When I uh, read this quote, we may often give without love. People throw the things, take and go. But we can never love without giving. You have to give. You have to be with them. You have to understand them. That is the love that you, the father and mother, the couple sitting together, hours together, they can, before the marriage, they can sit hours together in, in the cupboard park, in Lal Park, anywhere, hours together without eating. But after marriage, yes, after marriage is very, very important. You, But we can never love without giving. Giving is very important. To give, you have to work hard. You have to sweat it out. And understanding happens of its own. When you sit together, you both meant to become one. And then you talk in one language. Husband wife will never talk in two languages in, any, in front of anybody. They always make sure that they talk in one language. They plan it. Out. If husband says something, even if they're wrong, the wife never in interferes. And the wife says something, husband never interferes. No, no, that was right or wrong. That was the beauty of love, what Swami Chimenez was trying. We may often give without love. Yes, that was painful, that was hatred, that was uh, disease, and you fall sick. But we can never love without giving. When you give, you feel the love because the love is flowing from the other side. You give it because you know it is not yours. It is to be shared. And when you give it, you feel when you look at the people, you think, oh, God has come in their form. God is testing me. Yes, God and the nature is testing you. That the more you give, the more it comes. Mother Teresa said, the more you give with the love and more it keeps coming. Everybody knew that. And hence they all come. Even the, the, the Sardar, this uh, Gurudwara president comes to Rakhun school. And he just bows down and touches the feet. He wants to give. But he gives with so much love, so much of happiness and so much of respect for the smallest. Can you believe and you can see they are very strong and healthy. So whenever you deal, even when you talk to your wife, carry something. I, whenever my people go and meet any top people, I say, did you carry any sweets? I said, give. Give them first. Even if I used to send things to the Indiana police station, and they come with the same force coming back. How good some of you? This, these sweets are for the children. I said, we have little extra. We wanted to share. They always collect and give. Then you give. Your love flows. But we can never love without giving. You can never, don't call like, I love you, I love you. No, no, no. You cannot even tell your mommy, I love you. You have to love by giving, meant to work hard. It's not that working hard to break your bones, but it's a some script. So Chilman said, so he said, we may often give without love, but we never love without giving.